hello friends today we look at the management of passwords so as you know already you have been using multi user operating systems where user is given an identifier and a password through which he can log into the system and start using services of the machine this password is always front line defense against the intruders Whenever any user wants to log into a system, first thing he or she does is they should have a ID and then a password. And if they have the ID and correct password is given, the system will allow the users to enter into the system and work on the system. So that is the multi-user systems require that an user should be provided with an identifier and a password as well. So the password actually serves. to authenticate the identifier of the individual logging onto the system for example if user is uh, ramesh and he must be given as the id ramesh uh, 791 and password let's say 718 colon ram so the user has to enter with his id ramesh 791 then enter that password whatever is given to him then the system will open for him so it is an authentication of the id so the identifier the provides the security to the system in these following ways the first one is id will actually help us to determine whether the user is an authorized one and he can gain the access into the system or not the second important thing is what privileges is uh, the user is having into the machine when he starts working on the machine whether it is an ordinary privileges or super user privileges etc a few users may have supervisory status so where they can execute all kinds of commands and uh, enter into any part of the memory and work on the machine and the next one is there must be some systems which will have anonymous accounts or guest accounts so user of these accounts have more limited privileges than others very less privileges will be there very less access to the files will be there the id is used in what is referred to as discretionary access control so based on the id the access control is allocated so user with id 1 will be given some access control to lower extent user id 2 may be given um, access control to a moderate extent user with id 3 may be given access control to higher extent so the id determines the access control of the users if you look at the unix password scheme <coughs> it will help us to understand how actually the passwords are stored in the stored in a machine in a unix so look at the steps given here while loading a password the first step is a user has to select a password after having an id he or she has to select a password of up to 8 characters in length and these 8 characters which are in ascii format using 7 bit ascii they are converted into a 56 bit value that is 7 into 8 is 56 so this 56 bit value will serve as a key input to an encryption routine and the encryption routine that is being used here in while loading the unix password is script3 this is based on the data encryption standard ds algorithm in this case the ds algorithm is modified by using a 12 bit salt value so what is this typically this value is related to the time at which the password is assigned to the user so a 12 bit value is created depending on the time at which time the password is assigned to the user and the second important thing is this modified ds algorithm exercises with a data input of 64 bit block of zeros this is the input and the output of this algorithm is an input to the second encryption stage and there are several encryption stages here so the encryption process is repeated for total of 25 encryptions so after obtaining the output from the last encryption stage 
The resulting 64 output is translated into an 11 character sequence. So you can see here the input password was 56 bit value. Now it is converted to 11 character that is 8 characters converted to 11 character sequence. So the hashed password which is of 11 characters is then stored together with a copy of the salt in the password file with the corresponding user ID. And it is shown that this method is secure against variety of cryptanalytic attacks. So let's look at the diagram about what we explained just now. Same thing is being given in the form of diagram here. You now observe a password file which is having a user ID and corresponding salt and corresponding encrypted password by using salt with input as 64 bit zeros, 64 bit block of zeros. And here you can observe crypt tree is an encryption routine which utilizes DES. It takes input as password which is serving as a key input to the script 3 uh, algorithm and salt is an another input of 12 bits that is given to the crypt 3 algorithm. By using this salt and the password of 56 bits it generates 11 characters and this is going to be loaded into this password file for the corresponding user ID and then it will also store the salt as well. So what is the purpose of salt being used in this generation of password and storing it in password file? The salt actually prevents duplicate passwords uh, that are being usable in the password file and in case even if two or more users do the same password, the password when they are encrypted, the encrypted value will not be different because the salt value differs because the salt, define, salt depends on the time, it, time at which the password is generated. The extended passwords of the two users will differ. And this also effectively increases the length of the password without requiring the user to remember two additional characters. The number of possible passwords is increased by a factor of 4096 so it becomes difficult to guess the password. And it prevents the use of hardware implementation of DES which would have become easy to uh, attack by using brute force guessing mechanism. So let's look at how to verify the password after the password is loaded. When user who has already got an ID and password into an Unix system, he attempts to log into the system. The user first provides a login ID and then enters the password. The operating system uses that ID to index into the password file and retrieve the corresponding contents which are plain text salt and the encrypted password. The salt and user supplied passwords which are used as input to the encryption routine to generate an encrypted password. Now, if the current encrypted password matches with already encrypted password stored in the password file, then the password is accepted means the entry of the ID and password is correct. The encryption routine is designed so as to discourage the guessing attacks. So this is a diagram depicting how the Unix password is verified. You can observe this password file and once a user logs in, the user ID is selected from this password file and his salt value is selected and this salt value and what all password he has entered is given to the script 3 encryption routine. So it generates a 64, uh, it generates 11 character uh, output sequence. And there is already encrypted password stored here. So this password, encrypted password which has come after this crypt3 encryption routine is compared with stored encrypted password. If they are equal, if they match, then the entered password is correct. That is how the password will be verified. There are certain threats to this Unix password. Number one is if any user gains access into the machine using a guest account, then he or she can run a password guessing program called as password cracker and get all the password uh, data of all the IDs from the password file and he can use it for any malicious activities and there are some users when they are asked to choose the password they pick the 
password which are very very short for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 or abc so these are very small passwords which are being chosen and it is um, such uh, passwords can be easily hacked so simple remedy for this is to reject any password which are fewer than certain characters maybe 8 characters in length then the next one is picking a password that is guessable such as their own name, street name, you know, common dictionary words, their children name or their vehicle number. So this makes the job of password cracking straightforward because if they get to know the details of a person they can try using those details and crack the password. So that's all about how to load a password and how to verify a password. So at the end of this session you must answer these questions to check your learning outcomes. Why the password is required? How do you load a password in Unix system? How do you verify a password in Unix system? What is the purpose of salt? And what are the threats to the Unix password? Thank you.